20. All those things that you can remember, uh, the other things that you cannot remember, there will be more time to thank God for that. Let us first go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 18. This is very familiar in everything. Give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concern, concerning you. So as we set the, uh, the uh, thing that we're going to look at, this verse encompasses everything. It says that in everything, not in some things, not in many things, not in the good things, not in the uh, uh, calm things, not in the things that are going for us, not in uh, good circumstances only, but even in bad times, even in, in, in what seemingly bad things, even in sickness, even in times wherein we really cannot understand and our, our faith may not be able to grasp the purpose of God, why things are happening that are not for us. But the Bible is very clear when it says that in everything, give thanks. Amen? Amen. Why? For this is the will of God. So whatever happens to us is God's will. There is no such thing as an accident in the life of a child of God. It is God's will. No matter how bad it is, it is God's will. So, Pastor, is it God's will for me to commit sin? Well, it is God's will for you that you understood that you committed sin and that you learned your lesson and that you are going to mend your ways and trust the Lord and uh, in turn, because of that, become stronger and serve God better in our lives. So it is God's will. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Meaning to say that God has a plan for me and for you, for each and every one of us. God's plan for me may be different from what his plan for you is, but one thing is sure, that his plan is according to his will, and if it is according to his will, it will always good, make a work for our good. It is always for our benefit. It is always for our improvement. It will make us better. It will make us stronger as long as we trust in the Lord and keep our faith in him. So everything that happened to us in 2020, we need to thank God for it. No matter how we look at it. Because you see, we may be wrong, but God is never wrong. We may not understand, but God knows. We may not appreciate it, but God is working behind the scene. If it is complicated, it may be a tapestry that God is working on so that he can make us a, a good finished product of the things that he's weaving in our lives. You see, the process of creating something may be difficult. It may be hard. But the finished product is always something that we can appreciate. Amen? So there, there's a saying that uh, those people that are strong in life are those who graduated from Hard Knocks University. Those who experience so many hardships in life, maybe during their uh, younger years, but those things, they did not allow those things to destroy them, but they allowed those things to make them stronger. So that's why we need to thank God in everything. Philippians 4, six, Be careful for nothing but in everything. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Even though God already has a plan in our lives, but still God is allowing us to approach him boldly in the throne of his grace, that we may make our requests known unto him. It is not because God does not know it, but it is because it is something that our heart may desire. Again, what that request in our hearts may not be according to God's will, but when we open it up to God, then God will be in a position to show us a better way. He will be in the position to answer our prayer the best way that only He can do. We may want one, but God may answer two. We may want to be there, but God 
may bring us to a better place. We may desire this thing, but God may have a better thing that is uh, prepared for us. But we need to always be in prayer in everything with thanksgiving and we must let our request be made known unto God. And if our request coincided with God's will and God gave us, gave us that request, then it is going to be a great source of joy in our hearts that we may praise Him, glorify Him, thank Him, honor Him, and know that we are worshiping a prayer answering God. Amen? Psalms 107, verse number 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Amen? God is good. Just, just this reason is reason enough that we need to thank God because God is good. There is nothing bad in God. There is nothing negative in God. There is nothing sinful in God. But there is only goodness in God. Not only that God is good, but God is good all the time. God is good every time. God will always be good. That's why the Bible says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Not only that, for His mercy endureth forever. What does it mean? It means that God will be faithful to forgive us. It means that God will be faithful to cleanse us. It means that God will be faithful to always help, help us to live a righteous kind of life. It means that God will not give us what we do deserve. Amen? That is God's mercy. His, His grace hath given us something that we do not deserve, but His mercy will not give us what we do deserve. And that is the mercy of God. And how long will God do that to each and every one of us? Forever. It will never stop. That's why we are not consumed. Because if God is not merciful, then all of us will be consumed. All of us will die. All of us will be taken away from this world. Because no matter how we try, we will always fall short of the glory of God. No matter how we try, we cannot approximate our lives to the will of God. No matter how we try, there is nothing that we can do. And that is why God's mercy had given us His Holy Spirit. That, that the Holy Spirit is residing in our lives. And that is the power that can make us accomplish anything and everything that God wants us to accomplish if we are going to yield our will to the will of the Holy Spirit. Amen? His mercy endureth forever. Psalm 7, 17. I will praise the Lord according to His righteousness. Amen? God is righteous. He will never do wrong. Whatever God does is always right. And will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. That is why our lives must be filled with praise. That we praise God in everything that is happening in our lives. Why? Because it, is, it always reflects the righteousness of God. It always reflects that God is right in everything that He's doing in our lives. As I have said, there are so many things that we cannot understand. Because even the Bible says in Deuteronomy 29, 29, that secret things belong unto the Lord. But there are those that were revealed unto us. But even though they were revealed unto us, there are still so many things that we could not understand. But one thing is for sure. Whatever things it is, all things are working together for our good. Amen? And that is because God is righteous. Therefore, He will always do what is right. This pandemic is right. Why? Because God allowed this. There is a purpose. And the most important thing is for us to understand the purpose of God. To see what this pandemic can do in our lives. To see what things are we going to learn. And to see that that our heart should cry out for those people who died during this pandemic without having a chance to know the Lord Jesus Christ or having a chance to hear 
the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it should challenge us and put us to shame that we have neglected this all-important work that God has given to us as ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. That maybe in this coming year, 2021, that our eyes will be opened, that our spiritual mind will be opened, and that our spiritual eyes will be opened so that we can see people, not as just people, but people with souls, eternal soul, that if they die without Jesus, then they will languish in hell forever and forever. And that might be one of the purpose why God allowed these things to happen, aside from the other things that we have seen so far, that this pandemic revealed what is in the heart of other people. And I believe it also revealed what is in our heart. So if that the thing that's in our heart is wrong, then we have to remove it and we just have to praise God because our God is a righteous God. Amen? Let us look at Psalms chapter 100, verses 1 to 5. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Amen? Amen. Gladness, what, not with burden, not with grudge, but we need to serve the Lord with gladness. Why? It is a privilege to be serving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen? It is a privilege to be in the court of the Lord. It is a privilege to be one of the people that has the right, the, auto the, the authority, that has the privilege of serving God. So that's why we need to serve the Lord with gladness and to always come before His presence with singing. Meaning to say that we must always have a merry heart whenever we are in the presence of God. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that made us. Amen? He created us in His image and in His likeness. And that we ourselves thank God. Because if we will make ourselves, then it will be filled with error. It will be filled with iniquity. It will be filled with ugliness. But because God created us, then there is that potential. If we will allow the Holy Spirit to live in our hearts or to live in the hearts of other people, there is that potential that we are going to be a masterpiece in the sight of God. Amen? We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. What does it mean? That He is our shepherd and the shepherd cares for the sheep and the shepherd will leave the 99 and find the one that is missing and the shepherd will give his life in order to protect his sheep. Amen? So that is our position in the Lord. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. So that's why he's good all the time. All generation. His mercy is everlasting and His truth will never change. Why? Because God is immutable. He never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. How can we thank God? Because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done in our lives. Amen. How can we thank the Father? Because He sent His only begotten Son to die on that cross that we may be saved. James 1, 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. That is why the Bible says the gift and the calling of God are without repentance. When God gave us something, it is something for our good. When God gave us something, it is something that is sturdy. When God gave us something, it is something that is steady. When God gave us something, it is something that will never change. That is why when something changes, it is because of us. It is not because of God. Amen? There is no shadow of turning when God 
has given us something. And there is no gift that God will give to you and to me that is not perfect. That the reason why all these gifts are perfect is because it was given to us by the perfect God. Amen? And we can be assured of that. That is why whatever gift you may have, then use it for the glory of God. Do not use it to entertain the world. Do not use it to lift yourself up, but use it that people may glorify God. Amen? Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat. And this is always our problem. Or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in the bar into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? You see, this is a rebuke to each and every one of us. We always worry. We're always uh, careful for so many things. We, we always have so many anxieties in life. But God said, you know, the fowls of the air, they do not sow. They do not reap. They do not gather into barns. Yet, our heavenly Father feedeth them. And then he says, Are ye not much better than they? You see, sometimes we look down at ourselves. Most of the time, we put ourselves at the bottom. That we are losing any respect for what God can accomplish in our lives. And that is the reason why nothing is happening. is because of our unbelief in God's purpose in our lives. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? You who always worry, did worry avail anything? Sabi dito, tumangkat ka ba nung nag-worry ka? Hindi eh. Ilang beses ka nang nag-worry, Sister Evelyn? Tumangkat ka ba sa worry mo? Hindi eh. Amen? Uh, tumangkat ka kayo nung nag-worry ka? Hindi. Di ba? Ang nangyari, tumanda itsura mo. Nangulubot ang balat mo. Nanghina ka, nagkasakit ka. Why? Because you worry about something that God already knows. And God has already supplied. All we need to do is to claim the promise of God. Verse 28. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies. And si lily, tingnan mo, consider man of the field. How they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon, one of the great grandest king of Israel, the richest king of Israel, whose wealth did not even enter the imagination of so many people. The Bible says, were not array in all its glory, was not array like one of this. It means to say that in all the glory of Solomon, he is not better than the uh, Catleas in the field. He is not better than, than the uh, flowers in the field that God has made. He says, Wherefore if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Problema sa panahon natin, binibihisan na tayo ng Diyos. Ang tao naman, pilit naghuhubad. Nagsusuot ng miniskirt. Sapat naman yung telang binibigay ng Diyos. Nagsusuot ng tripos, labas ang puso, meron pang libag. Ang itim. Nung nakita ng aso, di nilaan, nagalit pa. Nagsusuot ng hapit na hapit. You know, the fashion of this world is trying to distort the modesty 
that God wanted to give to his people. Why? Because we are created in the image of God. And God is never immodest. Therefore take no thought saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Meaning to say, the Gentiles here uh, means that they are only living for his word. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. God knows it. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. There is a priority in life. And that is the kingdom of God. That is to serve God. That is to do the will of God. And as we seek first the kingdom of God, the Bible promises that all these things shall be added unto you. These are just additions. These are just auxiliaries. These are not the main thing in life. Amen? And yet, we make these things as the most important things in our lives. That without them, it is as if we cannot find joy and happiness anymore. When you do not have the latest gadget, even though you already have a gadget, then there is still sadness in your heart. There is still sadness in your life. When you see other people enjoying things that you would want for yourself, but you cannot enjoy them, then you sometimes even question the goodness of God. You see, we need to be content of the things that God has given us. You see, my motto in life, the best of this world or in this world are the things that I have. Not the things that I do not have. Kaya sa akin, noon, ang pinakamagandang sasakyan, yung, ano, yung Montero. Kasi mayroon ako noon eh. Ngayon, ang pinakamagandang sasakyan, yung Highlander. Mas maganda pa kaysa sa BMW. Oo, wala naman ako noon eh. Yung meron ako, pinakamaganda. Yung kakainin ko mama, yun ang pinakamasarap. Bakit? Meron ako eh. Pero pag inisip ko, yung pagkain ng iba, mawawalan ako ng gana pag nakita ko pagkain ko. Sabi ko yun na naman, walang kwenta. Pag inisip ko yung bahay ng iba, pag uwi ko, sasabihin ko, ano mong klas yung bahay to? Wala man niyang kapayapaan. You cannot even call this home sweet home. Why? Because I'm thinking of other uh, houses that are more beautiful than what I am enjoying right now. You see, ladies and gentlemen, that is why for me, the best church in the world is IBCSR Shimri. No other church can be greater and better than IBCSR. Why? Because it is where God placed me. It is where God placed you. It is God's will in our lives. So we need to give our best to the best that God had given unto us. Amen? Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Let tomorrow worry. Don't worry about tomorrow. Because we know who holds tomorrow. And we know He is holding our hands. Amen? We know that. For the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof, or the worries thereof. Tama na yun sa araw na yun. Huwag mo nang dagdagan pa. Isaiah chapter 12, verses 1 to 6. And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Thou, thou, thou was angry with me. <laughs> Galing ano? Thine anger is turned away, and thou comforted me. You see, God's anger is holy. And God's anger is for our good and our benefit. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name. Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, 
thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Amen? That's why we, we, we need to be joyful. We need to be loud. When we, when we uh, praise God, we, we need to, to have always a song not only in our mouth, but a song in our hearts. Why? Because we're serving a great God. That He saved us. And everything that accompanies salvation, He had given unto us. Amen? That's why in Psalms chapter 50, verse number 14, the Bible says that we need to offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. Not only that we thank Him, but we need to give what is due unto God. You see, so many people do not understand giving. Giving is not because God needs something. Giving is because we need something from God. Giving is not us removing things from ourselves. But giving is letting things go to God because we know that God will always supply for all our needs. Giving is an act of faith. It is an act of worship. And that what pleases God. It is not the gift per se, but it is the heart of the giver. Thanking God for everything that he has done in his life. Especially so when we promise that we are going to be faithful to God. Amen? Kaya nga, nakaka, minsan, bilang nagtuturo, yan, maraming nagtuturo dito sa atin, kaya maganda rin mag-preach ng ganito dito kasi hindi lang ako tumatayo sa pulpito eh. Bilang nagtuturo, nakakasakit ng loob, minsan na, napakasimple ng katotohanan ng Biblia. Ang miyembro, alam na alam niya kung ano yung totoo. And sasadyain niya pang hindi gawin. Bagamat ang pinagagawa mo at itinuturo mo ay para sa ikabubuti niya. Para bang sakit-sakit na loob? Ano ka ba? It is for you. It is for your benefit. It is so that God will, will uh, bless you more in your life. Not because of the gift that you're giving, but the attitude of your heart towards God. Do you remember when, when uh, this Mary uh, broke that bottle of spikenard, a very expensive perfume, and poured it out and anointed the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ and even dried it using her own hair? Do you know, when Judas looked at it and the disciples, they said, it is a waste because it is expensive. But when God look at it, it says, it is a memorial. It is something that was done, that she did, that will never be forgotten forever. So that is what God will look at the things that we are doing for Him. That's why a Christian should, be, should not be stingy. Do you know about why? Because we do not actually own anything. Whatever we may say we have in our possession are only borrowed from the Lord. And it will be wise to treat the source the best possible way. Because if God will put a lid or a stop on that supply, then nothing will happen in our lives anymore. Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. Why? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So praising God must be perpetual. We are doing it here, and when we get to heaven, we will do it many more times than what, how we are doing it here. Colossians 3.15 And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, 
to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let's be thankful that we are in a church. Amen? Let's be thankful. But, Pastor, our church has a lot to be desired. There are so many things that must be fixed, that must be done. But thank God, because there, there is always hope. There is always something that we can do. There is always something that, that will be accomplished in our lives. And there is, will be a lot of opportunities. Because there are so many things that must be done in our church. But the main thing is that we have to be thankful. So how, how thankful should we be? Psalms 116 verse number 12. What shall I render unto the Lord? Amen. For all his benefits toward me. We must always ask that question. What can I do for God? Why? Because of all the things that he has done. You see, sometimes when we, when a person does something good for us, we are willing even to give our lives, to do everything, to, to uh, thank that person. Well, sometimes we do not know. Maybe people may do something good, but sometimes they may just, you know, may have an ulterior motive, or maybe they're just trying to, to uh, you know, satisfy their ego. Or maybe they, they're just trying to cover uh, their conscience or whatever it is. I'm not saying that, that what, every time a, a man does good, it is uh, uh, because of some ulterior motive. But there is a possibility. But one thing is for sure, when God does something, it is for our good. It is for our benefit. God is not going to gain anything from it. But he did that to us. So what can we do? for all the benefits that God had given unto us. Amen? 2 Corinthians 2.14 Now thanks be unto God, which always caused us to triumph in Christ, and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. So Paul had this kind of attitude. And lastly, Psalms 31.19 Oh, how great is thy goodness. Amen. The goodness of God is great, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee. Who are these people? Those who are his children. Those who repented of their sins and accept the Lord Jesus Christ, their Savior. For them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. You see, if we will just look back in our lives, since we came to the age of accountability, even before we got saved, you will see moments after moments after moments that maybe we should have died or may have meant an accident that made, you know, debilitate us for the rest of our lives. Or we have been pushed into corners wherein there is almost no way of escape, but somehow we were able to get away with it. And then when we got saved, so many things happened. The devil doubled down on us, tried everything to destroy our testimony, tried everything to make us ineffective in the ministry did everything so that we cannot glorify God in our lives. But in all those things, the goodness of God is great. That he allowed us to escape those things. That he allowed us to find a way of escape. That he allowed us to still do something for him in the ministry. That has given us Chances after chances after chances after chances. And even this year, look what happened. The pandemic is all over the world. The world panicked. The world does not know what to do anymore. They were in a quandary for quite a while. And until now, even though there are already va vaccines that were developed, there are still uncertainties in the mind of so many people. 
And can we, can I say, let us look at our condition specifically? That it is as if we're not even in a pandemic. We will not even miss a Sunday to worship God. We never miss a meal. The whole time, nine months and counting. So if we will just look at it and look at God, you can never deny that whatever happened to us or is happening to us, you can always see the hand of God. And that is something that we can thank God for. So as we end this year, this 2020, I know it's still two more days, but corporately as a church, as we end 2020, why don't we just, you know, kneel down, even if you're sitting down or standing up, but just go to God's throne of grace and just thank him for everything that he has done in our lives whatever it is that you may think of I'm going to give you time to pray and then when I see that everybody has finished praying I will just close us in prayer and whatever thing that we that must, that must be done we're going to finish it, but we will end up in 2020 as a church in thanking God for everything that He has done in our lives.